Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Af Malhotra once again on Straight Talk with Af. Now, uh, I always promise not to disappoint you. And today I have someone extremely special on the show and someone who's, who is doing um, some incredible work in the field of music. And this is a field, as you all know, is close to my heart. So I'm actually privileged and honored to have a maestro on my show of the instrument that um, is called tabla, a percussionist, a composer, a child prodigy, uh, an award winner, 108 awards this individual has won over the last uh, 15 or 20 years or more. The face of Spotify, um, especially related to the, the tabla as an instrument dedicated to the tabla, works with Dior, um, has combined her skills with people from so many different generations and walks of life, uh, just a pioneer of diversity, in other words. And so without further ado, I'd like to welcome Anuradha Paul on the show. Anuradha, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on Straight Talk. Thank you so much, Af. It's very, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's, uh, I was waiting for this episode because there's so much we need to discuss. Uh, before we start, however, I need to say one or two more things, apart from what I've already said. Um, you know, your, uh, your hard work and dedication and talent, of course, has brought you to this point now in your life, I guess, where you are a, um, a role model for not only musicians and percussionists, tabla players like myself, of course, but also for many generations and people from all backgrounds, including women and young girls, who now you've almost set a stage where it's cool to be and it's possible to be a fantastic musician and a, and a tabla player as well, and just thrive uh, in through sheer hard work, commitment, and of course, going through some trials and tribulations, which I know you have, which you'll tell us about. And for that, I'm grateful um, that you've done so. And today is about promoting you and your work. So before we go into all of your amazing projects, I know there are things like, for example, uh, Anuradha Pal in, in Tabla Juggle Bandi with herself, which you're going to tell us about, uh, which you've done a long time ago. In 1996, you did Sri Shakti, which is the band that you you, you still pioneer. Su Fore, the folk um, band that you have. And of course, um, Recharge, the, the whole music compilation around, you know, fusion of jazz, folk, Sufi, and so on and so forth. That's just some of your work, right, Anuradha? So before we go into the new stuff, because I know you're desperate to talk about it, tell us a little bit about who is Anuradha? How did you get to this point? How did you get into the tabla? Like, what's the story here? Okay, well, you know, I. it's a long, uh, it's a story about a lot of courage, I would say. It's a lot of trials and tribulations that I went through. For example, I mean, I'll just uh, briefly tell you, like my mother, she, Ila Pal, she used to sing guzzles. And my father used to take me to these classical concerts. He was a doyle of the pharmaceutical industry, Mr. Right. Devinder Pal. Right. And uh, when he took me to these classical concerts where I heard of these great legendary musicians, yeah. I was just a child, like as an infant, he used to take me. And yeah. then many musicians used to also visit my grandmother, Vyasa's house. and. Then they noticed my rhythmic flair and they suggested they, you know, I was already learning classical vocal uh, by the time I was six years old, because it was a sort of a tradition that you learn some form of music or dance or sport or whatever, sure. uh, along with the academics, which where you had to be very good. And uh, uh, so I started learning classical vocal and tabla together to get a firm foundation of rag and tal. But initially my first tabla teacher, he, he refused to teach me. He was say, he just said that you know tabla is impossible to play. It requires too much strength and persistence, and you know it's breaking tradition. And I'm not going to teach you. Mm -hmm. Simple. And uh, but I have the kind to be deterred by naysayers, and so I decided to learn on my own. And then later, when the teacher accidentally heard me, he was stunned, and then he finally started teaching me when I was six. Mm -hmm. And uh, then. Uh, uh, because of my, you know, I mean, it was great that my, you know, my mother inculcated that zest to learn and practice and be creative. And my father inculcated that scientific and introspective of how to become a professional musician despite the odds against me. And I see right. odds because, um, you know, if you don't come from a musician family, as you know, the Indian classical musicians or the folk musicians come from a long lineage of, uh, you know, 
Karanas and musicians' families. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't come from musician family. There was no musician. Up me. I'm the first professional musician in my family. And so to get to learn the ropes of the trade, to understand how to work around things, to even understand how to, you know, uh, go through the go through the challenges meant that I have to find my own way. There was no godfather. There was no guide. Yeah. Um, yes, I had the tremendous support of my parents, the blessings and uh, should I say uh, the inspiration that, you know, they allowed me to do my own thing and let me be my own person, which which is a great, great blessing. Mm. And so at nine, I started when I was just nine years old, I started giving Tabla uh, Sula performances on Dudashan and radio wow. and accompanying vocalists and instrumentists when I was just 13 or 14 years old. And at age uh, 11, uh, a very key defining factor was my urging my gurus, Ustad uh, Lanaraka and Ustad Zakir Sen, to be the exacting, as exacting and, uh, you know, and inculcate that discipline and high standard. That would make me the best. That's, that's something I requested them and I said, you know, just uh, make me the best. May, just don't compromise, but just mm. teach me in such a way that there's no nothing lacking in me. Mm. And mm. this sort of, you know, this actually um, instilled in them that that should I say the confidence and instilled in me the promise that uh, definitely shaped the future mm. and permeated it in all my collaborations and jugal bandis with the young and the veterans in music as well as in my solo performances. Mm. And then, of course, all through my school summer vacations, I would undertake these intense practice schedules, which are called chilla, uh, of 40 days uh, of 10 hours of practice every day. Wow. So, so, so you know, I, I was very uncompromising with myself, very demanding of myself, because I knew that there's nothing going for me I don't have, I don't come from a musician family mm. and I'm a girl in a male dominated field, both negatives. Mm. So the only thing that could do the talking was my work because I didn't have anybody doing the talking for me, simple or recommending mm. me or supporting me. So uh, my, uh, and again, from my, uh, to tell you a little bit about my, from my legacy or my family, mm. uh, my grandfather was uh, a doctor in the Indian army and a major in the Indian Army, and he was, uh, you know, he, you know, and, and then my Nanaji uh, was, my Nanaji, that's my maternal grand, uh, grandfather, sure. uh, was uh, Padma Shri M. T. Vyas, who was a renowned educationist and a freedom fighter who founded over 40 schools across India. Incredible, and wow. So I was fortunate to get this fantastic exposure to a lot of, Indian culture, the heritage, the traditional values, patriotism, thus making strong ethics and hard work as a driving principle since I was a childhood, mm. since since I was a child, you know. So these were some of the, I should say, the defining things that made me whatever I could become, mm. you know, and uh, which contributed to my actually up such a difficult prof profession mm. uh, was, was all this. But then going ahead, you know, you might say, like, so I really didn't have a childhood like most other people had. You know, like most people, when they have their childhood memories, they, they think about fun with their siblings or going out with friends or, you know, chilling out, going here and there. But mine was all about having this unwavering focus for my music, for my studies, and for brain training games and sports, mm -hmm. because I was mm -hmm. typically very interested in all these things. Mm -hmm. And... And literally, I was a loner from the social standpoint, but completely in union with myself uh, and with all that I wanted to, you know, immerse myself in. So sure. typically, my day would comprise of six hours of school, two hours of homework, two hours of music training, five hours of practice, and the remaining time spent in commute, sleep, etc. Wow. You know, so yeah. in Chilling with friends, I would go every day straight from school and college to practice with different vocalists, instrumentalists, and dancers. Right? So, That's I incredible. mean, so that, yeah, you're surprised, right? So, that this is how you 
starkly different from most other childhood recollections. And this is, this was the defining phase of my personality and how I became uh, committed as a musician. Mm. Because mm. that professionalism was so inculcated that no matter what, whether it was, you know, like I also cherish those life lessons which were imbibed in these very numerous uh, road trips which I did across the length and breadth of India uh, with my family and also with my the call, uh, concert tours that I did. Because even if the concert was in a village, I would go and perform because I wanted to challenge myself mm. how I could travel and, uh, you know, learn to adjust to a very basic public transport and yeah. To a challenge, challenging situation, and still expect the maximum out of myself. So whether it was from a very basic thing to a seven star, I was able to make that shift very easily, and that's because I was in my mind very able to f- be flexible in that context. Mm. Mm. So mm. I think that's the, these are all things which contribute to, like let's say if you're working with different musicians, the first thing you need to have is an openness. Right. Yeah. You know, and yeah, ability to want to understand somebody else's culture, and ability to want to uh, come down from your comfortable space and get into what may be uncomfortable for you, but make that other person comfortable, so that together you create synergy. Yeah. There's there's a brilliant saying: to be understood, you first must understand. Exactly, and, uh, and it it feels like you did that. Can I go back for a second? I just wanted to ask you a question about you know when you were a child. Now you've had the, the benefit of hindsight as you grow up as an adult, and you go through all sorts of ups and downs, traumas as well. I mean, I'm a big believer, unfortunately, that traumas do have cataclysmic effects in terms of human development. Yes. Uh, I've had right. I've had I've had many, unfortunately, at a young age, and it's changed me a lot. And fortunately, I've come out smiling. But, you know, there's some people who, who don't, as you know. Um, tell me a little bit about two questions. One is, when you describe that childhood, now that you know you were dedicated and you were committed and, and so on, have you ever figured out what made you so committed at such, such a young age, um, knowing that your mates or your friends were playing somewhere else, but you were doing your riyas, your practice, for example? How do you maintain that consistency? What was going on in your head as a little child? I don't know. I think it was just uh, such an inner calling that I want. I felt the happiest when I play. Right. You know, I was just at ease. It was just a, like a liberation of the soul, and the sense of complete communion with the Almighty. The commun, mm. you know, like the ultimate bliss. Mm. And uh, I think that sense of, uh, and of course, I was, I was a jokes. Uh, uh, because nobody else was doing this, uh, yeah, and 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 I was a girl, and everybody was like making fun of me, and all sorts of things. Mm. And I said, it probably all that made me uh, more of a loner, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I, so I realized that I'm gonna have to, um, I want to prove myself worth it, mm. you know. Mm. I want to prove myself as having. Uh, and now those very people who made fun of me then now come around me and say, oh, you know, we were, you know, together in this and that and all that. But, yeah. uh, you know, so I think tragedies uh, or traumas definitely, definitely shape you. Mm-hmm. They definitely sharpen you. They definitely uh, bring out the best in you if you decide to do so. Correct. Yeah, and, correct. And yeah. otherwise, most people get put down, <clears throat> or uh, most people get put off, or they get dissuaded when they have problems. And mm. in my case, uh, yes, I went through a lot of that, and as you know, very, very recently as well. Mm. Uh, when you know, I've gone through several setbacks and tragedies, but I think each time my decision, there was a decision. That I have to take, and the decision was simple: Do you want to win, or do you want to lose? Do you want to stick in there, or do you want to quit? Mm. And mm. that that decision has to come from within. Nobody else can force it. And I think from the time I was a child, whether it was playing Lego, or whether it was playing chess, or whether it's playing, um, 
all the games that I played, uh, all that I think helped me to mm. realize that there's a beautiful world out there, and you need to celebrate the joy. Mm. And there's mm. so much of joy in 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 all that. Mm. Said, okay, you may not have what you want, but you have many other things as well. So enjoy what you have, and yeah. maybe if time is right, you will get also what you want. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So, Having the attitude for gratitude is yeah. a very important part. Mm. Being positive and being smiling about things. Mm. Like a lot of times, people tell me, "Oh, very lucky, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that, played with the best." I tell you, I worked very, very hard for it. I I I have sacrificed a lot mm. to get to that level of, of excellence. Where today, if I'm playing with any musician. That musician is confident that whether or not I have nursed with him or her, I will be able to connect as we are playing with the last. And that confidence that that musician has, right, comes from so many years of of being at the job yeah. and working at it, and like I said, practicing every day with musicians. Um, Going, you know, just basically not a moment of rest. Mm. Mm. When you're continuously seeking, that's that's important. That you are continuously seeking because there is no time to be complacent. There is nothing that you can you have done to be complacent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing because um, if you don't mind me asking, you live in Mumbai, right? Uh, in India, that's where you're based. Uh, do yes. you have? Do you have a family around you still? Um, how what, how does because I'm trying to get you know I one of the things I talk a lot about is making friends with uncertainty, and I figured out over the yes. years how do you do that? One of the techniques is to have certainty of something, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's your family, it's your friend, it's your partner, it's your tabla, it's whatever it may be. What gives you certainty when there is so much uncertainty? There is no sir. The only change is only only constant is change. Yeah, there is certainty. Okay. And and, and what about your support? The, well, the only certainty you have yeah. is you. How you deal with yourself, because you can't control others. So the un, only certainty you have is how you deal with a problem, or a setback, or a negative situation. Do you let it put you down, or do you let it teach you something? Mm. And that's a choice you have to make. And personally, I know like when I've gone through so many tragedies and problems in my life, every problem has only given me something further to work on, to sharpen my axe. And they say, okay, I need to get better in this area. Mm. You know, like for example, when my father was in hospital for seven months, um, brain cancer. I was in the hospital at night looking after him every night, in the daytime looking after my mother all day. Right? In the evening go and possibly play a concert. I wanted and practice at night while I was on my sitting in the ICU and practicing in my outside the ICU and practicing on my knees. Yeah. Yeah. And you know doing the calculation. Mm. while sitting outside in mm. the hospital and i did that and i uh for seven months and wow. uh fine i you know and then unfortunately my father passed away and there was a concert that was planned uh, many many months before of sri shakti which was happening three just three days after he passed away of course everybody was thinking that i'm going to cancel the concert and was, the organizer hesitantly called me you say I'm really sorry about your father. I hope uh, I don't know. I don't know how to ask you this, but I hope you're not going to cancel the concert. And I said, No, sir. I will not cancel the cancel, uh, cancel the concert because you have invested in me time and effort mm -hmm. in producing this concert. And as an organizer, I know you put in a lot. Now I have to keep personal tragedies aside mm -hmm. and deliver on my promises. And and uh, I remember everybody was 
saying, how can you do this? How can you do this? And my mother very clearly, she just came to me and she said, she told everybody who was saying, no, 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 you shouldn't do this. Saying that uh, her father would have wanted her to be the professional that she is. Her father would have wanted her to be, uh, to, to live up to the commitment she made. And okay, she has to deal with this pain and she has to deliver. There's no, so she actually told me, she said, you don't have a choice. You are going to play the concert and you better play it very, very well. Mm -hmm. I don't want any pain that you are experiencing and I know how much pain you are experiencing, but I don't want anybody to tell me that it was obvious. And I played the concert Nobody knew what I went through. I didn't even tell anybody for what all I have gone through seven years. Nobody knows about it. But, you know, in terms of the, you know, I lost five of my family members, my entire family I lost in, in two and a half years. Oh, God. Um, so, but the only thing that kept me uh, together mm. was music mm. and you know, my husband mm. who supported me, my students who were always there with me, and you know, and uh, friends and fa friends who actually, you know, s completely supported me in that bad time. Mm. And uh, you know, so I think uh, when the door, when God closes a door somewhere, He opens a window elsewhere. And uh, that's the only way I have lived my life. Yeah. With hope, with optimism, and uh, with positivity. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. I mean, thank you for sharing that with us, uh, and rather because mm -hmm. um, uh, it's so important. You know, because we, we are we are all of us are human beings trying to um, deal with the, the 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 trials and tribulations, as you said earlier on, and the ups and the downs, and then and in pursuit of some form of excellence, in pursuit of some sort of a dream or aspiration, we all have that in different walks of life. And as a musician, I must say that uh, certainly for me in my small 1% example here is that uh, the, the music that I'm involved in, like Tabla, you are, but Tabla for me is a, a, a psychotherapy, actually, to a large extent. And it is the dimension of the zone. You know, these days, as you know, the metaverse is very popular. I'm a technologist, too. So we talk loads about digital, the good and the bad side of digital. And this whole dimension that you go in where the chemistry of your brain changes with dopamine and um, all of the other neurotransmitters firing away. You know, your mobile phone is is one of those devices. Um, but for th when you think of tabla or you think of any instrument, it takes you in a dimension. If you're connected to that dimension, like you can plug in to that dimension and it does zone you out. And it's almost a blessing. It's a gift uh, that you have. And I'm sure you, ha you, you leverage your tabla regularly during those hard times to pull you out of those tough times. Was that the case? All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. That was always the anchor. Yeah, beautiful. That was always the life support for me. Mm -hmm. Always. Did, did always you... has been, always will be. The oxygen of my life. Yeah, oxygen, yeah. Did you see a final question? I want to move shift gears then. Um, did you see, uh, it's a random question, but I do like to ask these questions. Did you ever notice after your tragedies during that sort of horrible two and a half year period, when you revisited your tabla, did you see anything different in your playing? Did you observe anything different in your playing? It's a very subtle, nuanced question, but I, I think you'll know what I'm saying. You know, it's interesting that you say this because um, uh, a couple of musicians actually remarked and people who are very sensitive and who I consider my gurus, mm. they said something very beautiful. They said, Wow. Okay. All so these which emotions, means that, all these emotions, I'll just translate all these emotions, all the pain you've been through has injected itself into your, your performance and your instrument. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's not injected itself. Yeah. It is, it has actually enhanced. Enhanced. Sorry. Yes. Enhanced. Your, yeah. Augmented, because yeah. one is we inject ourselves with pain and yeah. the second is we go through the pain and then we experience, we, we, the, there is that word called tasir in Urdu, right. which is about 
the life force you know the the beauty of any music is in its life force right. it's not in its performance only mm. or it's it's in its inner beauty it's mm. in its depth it's in its grandeur in its thought process right that real music real music is not speed real music is not shosha mm. but the real music that's that's going to touch you and touch everybody else's heart is that which goes which 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 transcends that pain and goes towards the sense of realization of music real music and that's what many great musicians remarked after that and they said your music has really really uh, you know we didn't know you've gone through this pain we had no clue like once a musician i was playing with and he said i played with you two and a half three years ago and i'm playing with you now and i see this incredible incredible growth in your music as senior musician and i see this incredible growth in your music and i see that the way of thinking and projecting and playing the music is very different it's very evolved so what happened in this two and a half years i said a lot happened and he said something's happened that that has actually something's changed and then he found out from somebody that something like this had happened and then he called me the next day and he said, why didn't you share this with me and i said well i'm not the kind who wants uh publicity or sympathy or whatever i want my work to do the talking you liked what i did i'm grateful to god for giving me the strength to convert that pain into positivity mm. Mm. amazing and I, I mean that's why i asked you the question because um unfortunately i've been through that too and um it, as a musician you project that experience into your work and it is an elevation it is an elevation it is an enhancement it is an augmentation uh and i would i would love to listen to i don't know when got just just by way of audiences who are into music when were these two and a half tough years what year was it 2016 december to 2019 right okay 20 okay 20 okay right up to 20 just before covid just yeah just before covid and then covid hit so yeah. we were again thrown off gear completely in a you know as musicians if you don't have an outlet yeah uh, it's it's terrible yeah. you know you can't perform you can't but that's when i think i also turned that negativity into positivity because in in covid time i managed to help a lot of musicians and folk artists and travel musicians because when everybody was out of work you know suffering and i'm talking of the very very marginalized ones um, i raised funds and managed to uh so we we i gave about rupees 12 lakhs to uh these musicians that were around 20 states in india mm, wow that's cool. and uh, it was a very very well uh, coordinated and very should i say uh, it was not an arbit thing it was uh, where there was a lot of due diligence done to figure out that the musician actually needs the help Mm. and it was not just the musician it was instrument makers theater artists kakputli artists uh, you know all kinds of those people who live on the fringe of society mm. and uh, also a lot of women uh, and children that i managed to help at that because food ration and you know they have of covid uh, the when a lot of men folk had passed away and the uh, you know the bread earners were uh, gone the women were completely left with five six children or whatever you know nobody to fend for them nobody to look after and that's when i stepped in with my organization with my foundation mm. i have a foundation by the name of anuradha pal cultural foundation okay that's and uh, and which i i dedicated that foundation to my parents because they had also done a lot of work in their lifetime uh, mm. to help people the so i and my husband we started this foundation and uh, we and then that's how we managed to help all these women and children so about 300 and children uh 
There's nothing in a huge country like India, but it's a drop in the ocean. We have to start somewhere. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And and uh, we help them with food, with uh, blankets and medical supplies. Plus, we have 300 musicians and artists and instrument makers and all that. So it was a big thing. And then, of course, giving it to, you know, extending our help to the, the hospitals in Mumbai, the local hospitals, the public hospitals, you know, with walkers and wheelchairs and gloves and all mm. the necessary things and antiseptic and all that. So I think uh, what, you know, what that hard time, that terrible tragedy, made me also realize and empathize with that there's a whole world out there that needs to right? right? And okay, I didn't get, I, I had nobody, very, very few people with me went through what I went through. Mm. But now it's my duty to do something for somebody else. Maybe I don't know that person. Maybe the person doesn't even know the who, who the hell is sending the money. Mm. But it's not Mm. It's about the cause. Mm. Mm. And then after that, we have been doing a lot of work also with APCF, that's the foundation. We are now also COVID, we've been helping people recover through the, through the therapeutic powers of music uh, by, you know, presenting concerts, live events, and with, which are with a difference where I want a musical meditation and the spiritual music to reach everybody because the music, the power of music is infinite. Mm, mm. You know, it, it connects hearts. It, you know, cures you of so many illness problems, so many lifestyle problems, mm. uh, so many mental depression issues and so many other things. You know, I don't think there's anything like music, whatever kind of music, but that's, that's the elixir of life. Mm. And so I wanted to share that John. So we present these concerts, in open spaces in Mumbai yeah. and also in uh, schools and colleges and workshops uh, like we do these workshops and these music appreciation courses that I run uh, oh. for my foundation which is with the corporates as well because, you know people working in corporates are also tremendously stressed uh, with oh, uh, yeah I can you tell know. you that yeah. yeah yeah so they are also completely stressed out so yeah. And of course, the children and the students and all that. So uh, in technical colleges. So, you know, because of COVID and people getting, uh, it's so complicated to study, so complicated to meet and all that. So I decided to do this. And by God's grace, you know, we are doing a lot of different things now. Yeah. We are taking this in terms of festivals. We've done already from January this year, we started this. And we've That's already done 10 concerts. Uh, 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 different parks in Mumbai because we want it to be available to everyone irrespective of you know they don't have to pay a ticket mm. it's free mm. or, but obviously the cost of you know putting up that whole thing paying the artist the sound the light the stage all that my foundation takes care of that and mm. so it's it's a, it's a foundation that actually uh, is um, is about uh, you know it's a section eight company mm -hmm. essentially which is uh, a not for profit company that uh, works that that, that gives, uh, you know the should I say the donation the the people who donate get yeah. a tax benefit as well yeah so well, that would be great that you know any of your donors have, yeah. uh, they can read more about what I do and what the foundation does. On my website, that's www.anuradhapal.com slash uh, APCF, which is uh, the foundation. Yeah. Uh, and you can directly, you know, donate there and we send them the uh, tax benefit uh, okay. documents yeah. immediately. And uh, of course, we also, they can also support concerts. They can donate to our causes. We are, so uh, my idea really is to also young audiences yeah yeah so you know because i think our indian classical music uh, to expand its audiences you know and we need to grow beyond whatever has been doing been happening and grow our audiences thankfully due to uh, you know a lot of digital music and all this stuff 
the explosion online yeah. music everybody is consuming music but right. i want the respect for indian classical music to grow it's not about consumption it's about respect it's yeah. about that kind of um, you know that kind of visibility that this art form deserves right yeah. so yeah. that has been my uh, endeavor through this and i'm trying to create young listeners so that the next and the younger younger generation so what we do is we also get in children from underprivileged schools okay. right especially underprivileged schools to actually come and sit on the stage with brilliant us. brilliant because yes. we want to make it inclusive we want to make them understand the music and feel wow we are sitting with a top artist where you would otherwise have to pay a ticket you're yeah. sitting on the first seat next to the artist with that artist you're able to talk to him you're able to ask her or yeah. him about the music and that's where we create more listeners and we create uh, younger audiences that can grow our music and take it further yeah so that's also one of the objectives of the foundation to grow our indian music and to grow the listeners yeah. from the young to the senior most everybody gets it um uh, with with an with an idea to help them cure them yeah yeah it's beautiful i remember just to throw in an anecdote when i was much younger and i got into tabla my family was into music and my father used to compose hence i got into music um a funny story for you when i was in delhi we used to live in delhi i was there till the age of 9 there was an ustad who used to come from old delhi to, on his bike poor guy and and teach my mother used to play tabla actually that's how i got into tabla she used to play tabla and sit oh, and she used to accompany my father who we used to sing he was a he was a lawyer supreme court barrister but he was also a singer and i got my sister got into it she she's a barrister too in london but she's a fantastic ghazal singer and i got nice. into it but i was not interested in learning tabla the way my uh, teacher was teaching me because i found it boring and i was left handed he thought, and he said i'm sorry i can't teach left handed uh, i have to teach right handed so i played tabla right handed but actually i'm left handed and wow. so, um and the story which is interesting is that from a young age i was forced onto stage we came to london and my sister was performing in some show and the tabla player who was going to play was ill so my father said i was 11 he said you go and play and i was you know i couldn't i i could hardly play but i tell you something i went on stage and i never looked back because being on stage creates a sense of uh, pride and confidence uh, that is so so important it sort of elevates your um your experience you know what you're doing with these young children who are coming to your your um mm. foundation it gives you a sense of confidence and and later on in life when you're doing public speaking like this for example or you have to stand up on stage and do public speaking you it's it's the number one fear ask anyone in the world number one fear is public speaking but for you as a musician who's probably done thousands of concerts it's so natural for you to interface with people i'd love to now transition into this amazing work that you're doing with the fantastic concerts um that you are putting up and also of course this relationship with Spotify that you must tell us more about so over to you T tell us about what your what projects are you working on right now and what's exciting you with um with your work and your music um several things uh that i'm working on one is that i created a new ip uh which is called anuradha's tabla singh stories okay okay and the whole part is that tabla is not just a percussive instrument it is a melodic percussive instrument it's a very popular instrument but at times underrated by some people who just think it's good for claps but it doesn't have much depth in it because maybe because everybody plays fast so they think that that's the parameter of music but my whole thought about tabla is a little different uh my thought is that it is about it is a tool of storytelling i use it as a you know how i would how i would tell stories how i would you know so what i presented recently was um uh, the first time that an audio visual journey uh where you know an audio visual journey which is an immersive experience is what i presented and because after actually after many many years of introspection and exploration i decided that 
I want to demonstrate how the tablas can actually sing stories from the epics, from history, from folklore, from everyday life, and uh, interfuse that with a lot of different kinds of music, transcending the boundaries of language and culture. Okay, so uh, we presented uh, just last week, uh, we had a concert at the Nita Ambani Cultural Center in Mumbai, and uh, it was a fully sold out uh, concert. Uh, the first time that we that I unraveled this new creation mm -hmm. and uh, I did it with flute and with keys and the interesting part about this is that it has several firsts in its presentation. Firstly, you know, the tabla solo is usually accompanied with a lehra uh, and I've started this co concept of two rags. Okay. Two rags, two instrumentalists, two percussions. So that concept of duality, which is mm. there in the universe, the masculine and the feminine, mm. all those different aspects that I bring out and many other stories from everyday life that I bring out to show the story, you know, to demonstrate the, uh, the storytelling and the journey of mm. uh, music, the journey of life, the journey of sounds, the journey of percussion, and the power of percussion, whether, you know, when, for example, in that, what I also do is that I present the first part of the concert has me playing multiple tablas. Right. Uh, and uh, along with the keys and the flute and all that. And then the second part has me uh, presenting different percussion instruments uh, like, a, 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 you know, like an interactive conversation mm. uh, between them and that is when why this this whole concept evolved uh, mm. as you know as something that was and and i'm really happy to tell you that uh, this whole concept of storytelling and merging uh, this harmony of tradition and spontaneity uh, you know sort of you know basically to craft it's crafted in a way that it ignites your imagination Got so it. it's it's been it's been a sort of a a beautiful journey of exploration and self discovery, mm. and uh, we presented this last week uh, at uh, in Mumbai, and it was a fully sold out crowd. Uh, in fact, the tickets got sold out in two hours of open wow, sale. Wow, that's amazing! And yeah, and uh, it just goes to show that you know those who uh, think that uh, you know, so somewhere this is my continued lifelong efforts of making percussion and tabla specifically more yeah. understood as you know understand the depth and the beauty of that instrument not just this power and the speed and the repertoire which everybody is playing but the expression behind the whole mm. Mm. and i have done a lot of collaborative work with painting with music with uh, you know with uh, different kinds of mediums coming together yeah yeah wow uh, I, love that. I mean that's also that's also a fantastic way you talked about the younger generation that's also mm -hmm. a great way to appeal to their exactly taste, right exactly because somewhere i felt that <clears throat> we cannot present classical music in the same format yeah you know we need to present it correct you know earlier you had 2d then you had yeah. 3d then you had those you know those uh, the the what is it called the alternate kind of you know the, the virtual reality are, yeah the virtual yeah, reality. virtual reality yeah. yeah so when when you have all these developments in every other medium yeah why should music be left behind mm. yes we will present i only present my traditional music i mm. play the six dharanas of tabla so i have learned all that with a lot of painstaking effort to learn the six dharanas and make your hand able to adapt and play and connect the dots mm. so that's where my virtuosity and uh, training comes in uh, and my ability to uh, intersperse the gharanas mm. uh, in a manner where you see the richness and repertoire beautifully there beautiful but at the same time the for the non-traditionalists or the people the new audiences that are just coming in to figure out what is this new thing yeah you need to make uh, them feel comfortable you need to connect with them sure and which is why from the time i was in college is when i created a story actually when way back in college i created the story about how when i was told to present 
a performance in the college day for a rock loving crowd and my principal was insistent you're going to have to perform for them and i said sir these guys don't care for indian music he said but you can make it happen you can make people yeah. connect you have that special ability yeah and uh, on the spot i came up with a story which is a story of my own life and i put that in the in in the language of sabla got it and yeah. instantly people connected with that and that was the start of uh, what at that point i used to call anuradha sabla you know anuradha palim tabla jugalbandi with herself because the jugalbandi was with the traditional and the contemporary the traditional anuradha who's learned all those gharanas and the repertoire and the contemporary young musician who is wanting to reach out to the young Mm. and the uninitiated mm. you know and uh, so that's what started this in 2000 i think 5 is when i started the tabla jugalbandi and mm. then over the years it has evolved and now this has taken on a completely new dimension and this is now called anuradha's tabla sing stories amazing so it's amazing. an audio and a visual it's there's an okay. audio visual element to it in the yeah. storytelling Yeah and wouldn't it be amazing if you could I'm sure you've got it in in the works with Spotify that um, again to engage the audience much further as you know there's a lot of innovation in AR VR devices virtual reality devices now they're cheaper they're more accessible to create an experience which is an experience which is also available in virtual reality um and that just elevates you know that that gives you the sort of hit that you need to feel like you're immersed in it because not everyone can turn up to the like I live in London so I can't experience that until you come to London right to right, do this right. so it would be amazing to work on getting this production outside of YouTube and all these channels into a virtual reality setting um because I think yeah. that you know that is that is the future right? as you say change is constant hmm. yeah that would be great to do yeah. uh but uh so that's one of the things and of course yeah. i'm also working on a new album okay. and that album is uh dedicated to mother earth uh okay. and it's about you know how environmental sustainability and uh respect for mother earth is something that we all need to inculcate and deal with because climate change is for real sure. right and and it's not just something that the world leaders need to talk about but i want the music to do the talking yeah. so so the music the tabla actually the composition that i'm making is about these five elements the you know and how all these five elements come together that's the earth right, right. right. you know prithvi jal vayu akash uh, mm. you know uh, agni these mm. are the five elements and how these five elements come together to that's the earth and that's when we say you save mother earth because mm. it's you know one family one earth and we all need to take care of it and in my own way I've, so this is a new album that i'm actually uh, presently okay, working, working on okay yeah and uh, but when you plan to release it well i plan to release it as singles every okay. month right and then you know so there would be five or six singles okay. uh, that would be coming out and then the album of course uh, so we still working out all the other details okay. uh, and the production is on beyond right now okay. so yeah but it's it's going to be a very interesting uh, uh, project because uh, i have always uh, you know i think i've always enjoyed this kind of I, i've done this kind of communication kind of you know messaging uh but messaging without it being didactic you know music needs to be a tool of larger communication and we are when when if you you know and and my my explorations with rhythm also with for example stri shakti the the band that i created uh, all the male group the whole idea of that was to bring hindustani and carnatic music together mm. and even to date there is no other band even in the men which combines hindustani and carnatic music together mm. it's only combines you know uh, at best it's either carnatic or it's hindustani with maybe a rock or a jazz or whatever mm. Mm. right yeah. but combining these and especially all played by women and as well as the men that has been the 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 should i say the defining power of stri shakti 
mm. and that's what has helped other women and over the years we have already <coughs> worked i have only should i say empowered and worked with 75 women to give them opportunity to perform on stri shakti and the platform with stri shakti and showcase their skills and their ability and their talents to the rest of the world because we've had concerts in uh, i don't know 15 20 countries uh toured all over uk all over scotland mm. Mm. ireland we also in fact did a collaborative with the pan african orchestra uh mm. we've uh, we've done a lot of concerts in the far east of course india and uh, europe and us so it's a uh, so sri shakti really has the interesting part about sri shakti is that i keep wanting like typically all bands have the same five six members mm-hmm. so what happens is you're limiting opportunity to those five six chosen ones so sure, that's why right. because you want to be comfortable and do the same songs but music indian music is not about songs mm. indian music is about creativity indian music is about spontaneity That's right. And Indian music is about bringing the best tradition out. We have such a long heritage and tradition. Why do we restrict ourselves to songs? Mm-hmm. We, you know, the, the whole idea of song writing is a Western concept. It's not in India. Yeah, correct. Yes. Right. So, uh, my idea has been bring bring in these, you know, these seventy five women, uh, different musicians, different women musicians across every 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 time I try to bring in more different people. Yes. not just restricted to the five six people and make a band that performs the same pieces everywhere no every mm-hmm. performance of sri shakti is unique brilliant is different yeah. yeah that's brilliant and that's how it has actually opened out the doors for women musicians across the world because yeah. when you know somebody had to bell the cat and i guess it had to be me yeah no you that's uh, that's incredible i love the uniqueness of it question for you just in my mind do you still teach and how many um students are women versus men for me i didn't distinguish when i learned yeah i didn't think of myself as a girl when i learned so for me my students are students whether they are male or female mm. Mm. and i tell the students who come to me if they are female students my logic is very simple when they tell me we want to be like you we admire you we love you I tell them only one thing. It's not luck that made me. It's hard work that made me. It's commitment that made me, and it's an uncompromising attitude for perfection. If you can have the same commitment, you can do. Mm. Mm. It doesn't mean that you have to become a professional. It only means that you should not think of yourself as a girl and <clears throat> expect any less from yourself. Mm, mm, so mm. i have the academy in mumbai and uh, which is uh, you know um uh so we have a lot of students coming here plus a lot of uh, online students that learn from me uh from japan from us uk australia mm. uh, europe and uh, south africa also and you know mm. these places so it's a, it's nice to see the kind of love and respect uh, and the, the how much interest there is for learning in fact way back i think in i i started i created the first uh instructional video training dvd i right. created the the first uh, that was 2005 uh, way way before uh, online teaching became popular mm-hmm. uh, yeah. i created the first music i created a music label when i was in the first year of college mm-hmm. uh way before digital music and music labels became thing so somewhere i feel that having an eye on the future and being um futuristic and opening your thinking caps so mm-hmm. I've, a lot of the collaborations also that i do is because i'm willing to go that extra mile yeah Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I think you know one of the things that strikes me as being quite special about this conversation with you is the fact that, and I'm, I'm aware too, that there are many tabla players in the world. There are many tabla players in the world, and it's always a question people who don't play uh, the tabla have always asked me. 
you know, they say, who do you love to listen to? And who do you admire? And I said, well, different people for different things. It depends. And um, just recently, I'll give you a great example. I was with a very well-known Indian film actor who is coming on the show very soon, Atul Kulkarni who's been in many, he's a brilliant method actor. You know, yeah. you would have, you would have watched him. Yeah. I, I got to spend a few hours with him and I asked him loads of questions like I'm asking you, cause I was just intrigued. And he said something really interesting. And I'm going to throw you this and then you can process it and tell me what you think. So I asked him, I said, yeah, cause his view on, on acting and he'll sh- share this on his show with me and success is different to a little bit different to you. He believes in fate. He believes in fate. And I said, okay. He said that many of us work hard in Bollywood. We all, there's not one person who works less hard or more hard, et cetera, et cetera. We all uh, grafting. We've all been trained by the National School of Drama, da, 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 long list. And he said, some of us are actors and some of us are performers. Now the performers, you know who I'm talking about, the performers, those guys, right? Mm -hmm. And some of us are actors like him. I said, where do you put yourself? He said, I'm an actor and I'm happy with my acting. I'm very clear as to what I, I seek from my industry. I'm very clear and I'm content with it and I'm content with my roles and so on. And so in tabla today, you have many tabla players, many actors, but you only have a few actors who are also performers. And I feel like it's it's it could be the small thing. It, it could be the approach to the instrument. Like for you, I, I really do feel, you know, that you're an act, you're a tabla, of course, an amazing tabla player, but you're also trying to do something with the instrument and the music yes. that is outside of the realms of the normal. You are, aren't you? Absolutely right. Yeah, all, Absolutely all the time. Right. That's because you're wired that way. Right. It seems like you're wired that way. It's not like you woke up yeah. three years ago and said, oh, I need to do some innovation. It's clear, yeah. it's evident in your dialogue and your childhood that you've been wired in a particular way as a person. Yes. Maybe yes. you pro- you solve problems that way as well. I don't know. So I want to raise that point because when someone is watching this, they're thinking, well, she just worked really hard and I'll just work hard as well. But there is an X factor, let's be honest. Now, we don't know what that is. We haven't gone into that detail, but you have got something that is helping you differentiate yourself, which is what Atul Kulkarni was talking about in his work. Um, So I want to make that observation with you, but I want to take you to the final point because we do have to wrap up, but there's a, unfortunately, but the the final point is about two points. One is tell us a little bit more about Spotify because you mentioned it at the beginning and I did too. What are you doing with Spotify? Because it's a global brand. It sounds exciting. Tell us more. So I'm the the face of Spotify. They have launched uh, a program, you know, on the, on June 21st, which is International Music Day. Yeah. Uh, they launched a special thing for uh, a special playlist right. where they felt that the world over, everybody is looking at lyrics, voices, yeah. yeah, right? And that's like the most popular kind of songs are those that are sung. Yeah. But instrumental music is as if not given that status. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, even radio stations, many of them don't want to play instrumental music because they say the songs go better. Now, I don't get it because songs have language and music instrumental doesn't. So in a sense, instrumental should be easier to identify with because there's no language or words Mm. involved. Mm. But that's somehow the impression people have that uh, words go further or songs go further, maybe because of Bollywood Mm. uh, also uh, that's contributed to that. uh, Mm. Songs be more popular. And... um, so it's been, uh, you know, so their idea really is that their, their, I think their vision is about uh, bringing instrumental to the core, you know, and tabla being one of the most prominent instruments and percussion instruments of that. And which is, like I said, just not a percussion instrument. Like I have proved, uh, you know, it's an interesting dialogue that I had with a musicologist once, uh, just very recently, in fact, I think last year, and he was telling me, he said, so what's, what's this new thing you've started, you know? Uh, so I told him about mm. the blessing stories, that this is how I'm thinking about it. Because even he said, you know, you're always thinking about your music. Mm-hmm. You're always doing something new. So what's the new thing that you're doing now? Mm. And I said, I'm working on this. So he said, but tabla doesn't have a, it's, there's, it's a percussion instrument. It doesn't have notes. I said, no, it has mm. notes. Mm. And then I proved to him and I demonstrated for him 
how there is a proper octave in tabla. Right. Okay. And there are shrutis and the microtones, and there's an aro and there's an avro. Mm. Mm. So all the aspects of vocal classical music, because I first was a vocalist. So my foundation is vocal classical music. Okay. That's my base. Then I have built everything on that. Mm -hmm. Right? So he was stunned. He said, I never thought the tabla had so much until you just told me how you know, demonstrated this to me. Mm. Now, I think these are some of the, uh, should I say, this is some probably Spotify got to know about this from somewhere. And then they approached me. And they said, you have done all these things, innovations, with the exploration with rhythm mm. and making it inclusive. <coughs> like a lot of artists work where it's essentially about themselves and promoting themselves. Mm -hmm. But my effort has been about promoting the art form. Yes, I am. I may be the face of that art form. Right. I may have won so many awards. I may have performed in how many other countries and so many concerts and all that. Yeah. But essentially, my effort in all those concerts has been to keep the spotlight on the tradition that I embody. Got it. That yeah. I, Understood. Right. Yeah. And that the repertoire and bring out the repertoire and the richness of the instrument. Right. So this is what um, I'm bringing out with Spotify as well. So we are creating a song, uh, okay. uh, which will, um, I'm not allowed to actually tell you more, mm. but we're creating a song and that's going to be a, a you know, a, a really, should I say people to, for people to understand the depth of, and then they're going to spotlight some of the couple of, couple of instruments mm. so as to get people to understand that instrumental music is also as important as vocal music. Yeah, and yeah. which is why that project is called, you know, Echo. Uh, so it echoed with me as well. Yeah, but there, you know, and so that's how we're working on this project. And of course, like I said, the other project that I'm working with is uh, working on is the uh, the one of the the album about Mother Earth, uh, celebrating Mother Earth and celebrating that beauty through the tabla. Beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. So celebrating the beauty through the tabla, and I make that difference. Everybody uses keyboards, well, mm. all that, mm. right? Way back, I I created the Gajgamini. I don't know if you had a chance to see the film Gajgamini. Yeah, yeah, a long the, time ago. Yeah, which is the first time when tabla and voice, completely composed, curated, played by me, all the tracks, the entire from the beginning to the end mm. of that entire film, composed, curated, and played by me. Okay. Uh, and it's the first time when tabla was used as background score, composed and played by the same person and one person mm. at that, mm. you know. Mm. So, uh, and I did that for MFO Sense Up's film, you know, Gajikamini, and yeah. it was much appreciated in the Khan's film first. Mm. Uh, recently, I also worked with A.R. Rahman, sir, okay. uh, for his uh, film, uh, where again, so I think uh, what people are finding. That X factor yeah. is that that communication, yeah. that yeah. ability to connect with larger audiences, and that ability to straddle across different genres. Mm. That you know, because there are a lot of tabla players who play the play with vocal or play with instrumental, you play with the same artists, but it's very very difficult to be in a different in a in a uncomfortable space. Yeah, and and still find comfort. Uh, doing that yeah so i think yeah. these are some of the things yeah in the startup world you you would be called a disruptor or a trailblazer blazer because <laughs> uh you know or maybe it maybe in another part of the world you'd be called a misfit you know who knows but uh you know long may that continue uh you know i could speak to you for hours and i can't wait to uh, see you in london or if i come to india at some point we'll meet up again sure um yes be before i go i have a final sort of thought experiment it's an important question because of what you've been through the the world health organization uh and rather released a report recently on the state of mental health in the world and it's a yes. pretty sad state unfortunately the statistics are shocking one of them is one in three girl, teenage girls 
uh, suffer from um, depression, clinical, cl clinically diagnosed depression, clinical depression. And one in six adults suffer from clinical depression. And that number is just increasing. Those are the numbers that have been revealed to us, like someone saying, yes, I am clinically depressed. Um, we can't solve the problem individually. We have to solve it as a unit. You're trying to address that with a lot of the powerful resonance and the sounds and the music that you produce, uh, almost as therapy, and, you, the word you use. Yes. Um, also, the foundation that I told you about, where we are doing exactly that. Yeah. Bringing, trying to bring social transformation. We are not yeah. saying mental illnesses or depression sure, because sure. that's a taboo word in a lot of cultures. Yes. Yeah, right. I've but uh, essentially, our idea is that we address this depression through music, yeah. through the therapeutic powers of music. And yeah. that's why we are doing these music appreciation courses yeah. in, in schools and colleges and, and corporates. Yeah. And for the and for the general public as well. Yeah, no, amazing. Is there one thing if if I put a ch a child or a, a young person right in front of you right now who's been going through a difficult time, is there one thing or a few things you just want to share that you would like to impart because it's a very important agenda we also have to drive and you are already. Is there anything you'd like to share that comes from your heart uh, to that young person? Well, you know, just the other day some a child that was uh, autistic came to my academy in Mumbai to learn. Oh, yeah. right. And the child's parents had approached their Ayurvedic doctor. Yeah. The Ayurvedic doctor they, was treating the child, but the Ayurvedic doctor then reached out to me. She said, you're, the one, you're doing all this great work to help society and to help people through music. So can you help this child? Hmm. You know, And this child uh, came to my academy. And uh, what was interesting is that the way he could connect with music, and now he started learning, right? And I can only see that that restlessness mm. that he had is now becoming stable. He's coming down, mm. right? The, he was unable to concentrate for more than a few seconds. Mm. Now he's cooling down, he's focusing on his work. Mm. And his parents are even telling me that it's less than a month and he's already better. Wow. A friend of mine, her, his, her, her child um, was one with a lot of other, uh, lot of other issues. Uh, I don't want to call it out because mm. it's sensitive. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, but, uh, but then I told her, I said, you know, just get him to learn some music get him mm. to learn some music and he started playing the drums okay and now this guy this guy who was so bad in the studies he mm. couldn't pass without you know he was, he was awful in the studies mm. Mm. now this guy is going to go into pre-med school wow that's amazing it's amazing so that's the power of music power. yeah that's the power of music and that's why I feel that governments need to actually invest in musicians mm. uh, as cultural ambassadors. Mm -hmm. We go across the world, we perform and do all that we do. But somewhere, if there is a, um, you know, a time with world health organizations, mm. people that are, I'm very happy to work with organizations where they, their agenda is to help people. Because that's my my job. My that's what I want to do. So music, mm. and I'm very happy to connect with people, work with those, through and and help them cure through music and yeah. become positive again through music. You yeah. know, and remove yeah. that depression. So yeah. I'm uh, like I work with women organizations. I work with children. I work with uh, I work with uh, different kinds of groups that are disadvantaged. Uh, I'm very happy to do that and use music as that tool for getting society together. Yeah, because again, yeah. I feel there's so much of strife in this world. If only we were to listen to the music of our hearts, mm. we would not be having problems. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you 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 summed it up beautifully and I, I will sum up with Oscar Wilde's quote, which is, be yourself, which is what you are, everyone is already taken. And exactly. um, you are definitely being yourself and you are a stalwart 
in not just music and the tabla, but of course, it seems like you're taking your skill and your art and your talent and you're, you're diversifying into so many fields to solve problems, to help other people. And for that, I'm deeply grateful as a musician and as a, a entrepreneur and the other hats that I wear as a philanthropist as well in my life. That's in- incidentally, that's also one something which I have done, being an entrepreneur. Uh-huh. I'm also an okay. entrepreneur. I'm also, uh, uh, you know, a founder director of uh, two companies, which are in, exactly involved in, like I said, one is a music label, and the second, which is the foundation, that's the, you know, that's doing all the social work. Wow. So, so yeah, so I wear many, many hats as well. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. That amb- I think there's no doubt, which, are, which is what I said, the disruption or the trailblazing, that ambidexterity, as we call it, is what allows you to bring that into your music, take it from your music into other fields as well. And I think that's a good, very important learning for people listening here who are going into music, that it's not a one trick pony. It's not like I'll just do one thing for the rest of your life. You are wearing different hats, aren't you? You're wearing them, taking them off, wearing. And I think that's what makes you the, the skilled person you are. And, you know, very interestingly, I was, uh, what I've also tried to do is to bring the repertoire of the tabla, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, bringing in uh, different percussion instruments, Yeah. right? Uh, for example, when you talk about ambidextricity, uh, I play the djembe with my left hand. Okay. I'm a right hand, right ear on the tabla. Yeah. But I play the djembe with my left hand. I play, you know, so... It, it just makes me realize when I, I play like these eight or nine instruments yeah. and the whole idea was like when I was doing something for uh, women, I actually instituted this award as well uh, to uh, recognize and encourage uh, young girls uh, toward, towards music, dance and social service. Brilliant. You know? yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and we also do this through the Kisan Vikas Patra. So that is we want to help the farmers. Got so it. again, it goes back to my roots, to my patriotism. And so I've done a lot of different music videos also on India, celebrating the beauty and mm. diversity of India, mm. you know, through mm. music. And uh, like Bharat Vandan, like Tal Tiranga, uh, Dancing Rain, several al- uh, stuff like this, or like Recharge Plus, which is a fusion album, where yeah. I amalgamate, I've played about uh, 15 or 20 percussion instruments and I have composed it with vocal with uh, like 15 uh, so many other so many Mm. other instruments many many instruments in orchestral design Mm. uh, choral so using different for art forms bringing them together Mm, Wow! jazz African so you must hear hear these albums of mine I recommend I will I will you know like uh, uh, recharge plus Nirvan, which is my spiritual music album. Nirvan, or, which okay. is yeah, that's a spiritual music album I composed when I was in college, uh, because I was going through so many intense spiritual experiences that I had just had to put it into music, and mm-hmm. I think that's how uh, and and it's 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 a journey from the Upanishad to the Vedas to the Bhagavad Gita, and that whole journey, and. Uh, uh, and of course, many other albums like, uh, and like I said, the Bharat Vandan, mm. Tal Tiranga, and all that. And uh, now this new thing that I'm doing on the environment, and which is also very exciting. Yes. And then I'm also doing. Uh, uh, by the way, I didn't tell you about my group Sufori. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's that's. This is actually what I call. Uh, uh, you know, it's a combination of Sufi folk, Kavali, classical coming together on one stage. So the different folk music, uh, you know, maybe the Rajasthani Manganya musicians mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, coming together with the Carnatic musicians, then with some Sufi, some classical, some percussion. So it's different themes, uh, mm-hmm. different combinations, and then we have different guest artists coming in. So we, in fact, have a big concert in Mumbai that we are doing on the 18th of August. Okay. Uh, and that is called Bharat Vandan. Uh, okay. So uh, it's, this is going to be happening at the uh, iconic, uh, prestigious, uh, the Ravidhanati Mandir at Prabhadevi, uh, next right. to the city of the Temple. Wow. So, um, so a lot of things like this that we are doing, which are basically about getting people together. And like mm. you see, in all my work, it's not be, a, be about me. It's about inclusivity. It's about 
diversity. It's about getting more and more causes together and more yeah. people through those causes together. Yeah, and no, making this amazing. world a beautiful place. Yeah, for music. You know, it's been um, wow. I mean, we need to sit down together at some point when you come to London. <laughs> well, so I should be coming next year for a okay. long tour. Okay, yeah, then, sometime, uh, yeah. then uh, we'll do this again, and then I'll try and do it live with you. And and more importantly, sure. I think we we I, I want to let the our viewers that we've got thousands of viewers who will watch this when it gets onto YouTube and Spotify, Spotify as well, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, to those who know you, should know you more. Those who hadn't seen you before should now see you, and uh, you know, download these albums on the various platforms. I'm sure they're on Spotify or Apple or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. On, yeah, I'm on YouTube, uh, my channel is simple, Anuradha Pal Tabla. Yeah. And uh, in case you don't get any information or you don't remember, just go to my website. That's by my name, anuradhapal.com. Anuradhapal.com. And yes. your, your foundation in particular, I think, will draw a lot of interest. I'm certainly happy to contribute to that foundation. So we can talk Please about do. that offline. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yes, offline. yes, yes, yes. And, we uh, need a lot of help because we, we are doing a lot of thing, a lot of work in this direction of mental health. Yes. Uh, without talking about it, without calling it out, because yeah. in some cultures it's very taboo. And uh, we don't want to talk about mental problems at, at yeah. times. Right? Yeah. Uh, but we are exactly addressing that. I mean, I'll send you a couple of videos of how Please. joyous yeah. people are they come to our concert and what we've done is a very interesting mix of music. So first we start with meditation and yoga, mm. right? Mm. And I'm also the brand ambassador for Beti Vajau, Beti Parhau, for which yes. I've also composed the lyrics. Uh, yes. But that's a different subject and for which mm. actually the uh, Prime Minister Modi ji had called me the Bharat Ki Lakshmi. Yes, you know? so uh, I read about that. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, but the interesting part about the, the foundation is that we are promoting yoga and music uh, and the spiritual element behind all this mm. uh, how we can raise our uh, you know our, our thoughts how we can make ourselves better human beings mm. and more happier people yeah. you know? and mm. that's what this foundation is is doing so please uh, have a look at my website www.anuradhapal.com slash apcf for the foundation mm. yes. uh, so and anybody can contribute on that there's all the information yeah, you can best and uh, through various methods are there which are very simple yeah. at a click you can send money and we get to the, give you the tax benefits for that yeah do you also take international international payments work there or is it just in india uh i have to check with the international but i think if it's in india then we get to the tax benefit right. as well yeah. Yeah, because okay. it's it's an Indian government thing, but yeah, so no, what you can do is yeah you can send in money anybody can send in money yeah that's not a okay. problem yeah yeah we'll promote anybody that I mean send. when we when we finish a show we have a description on uh, YouTube and we will make sure we get all of your websites in there to ensure mm. all the listeners can go on there read about this and make sure that they contribute and support of course we'll do everything we can yes. to support the cause please no do question. that would be a good uh, support yeah. for all the work that we're doing uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. We're totally behind you, Anuradha. Um, as we come to our close, um, reluctantly, thank you so much for coming on the show. I was uh, thrilled to listen to you. What a powerful, emotional, inspirational, and insightful journey that you've had. And as a music performer, I've been inspired by you. I, we'll have a separate conversation about the tabla, and uh, there's so much for me to learn. And if I can get some time to sit down with you, that would be a pleasure. Before you go, just the last few words, how has the experience been for you over the last uh, hour and a half or so on this straight talk with AF? Just a few words to, to, to help us do better and encourage us to continue this journey. Well, I, uh, I like the straight talk because I'm a straight talking person. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I like the title. Uh, when, you, when you sent me the invite, I like mm. that. And uh, normally... Um, I don't do long interviews, mm. more than half an hour, 45 minutes. Mm. But I think it was so uh, freewheeling and, uh, mm. you know, like talking to a friend. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, look forward to connecting with you when I'm in London. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, my my reward, uh, my regards, and I have to call you Anuradha G now, which for those <laughs> because you know it's so hard for me just to call you Anuradha because I'm a musician too. And I have so much respect for you. You're a master yeah, yeah. at this trade. So just for other people, G is a term of endearment of respect. Um, so hence I'm doing that just in case you think, well, is that her surname? No, she's not an or other G as in her. That's not her surname. Her surname is Paul. So yes. uh, what a brilliant time we've had together. Um, thank you so much. Be well, stay healthy, keep smiling, make make a big difference like you are. We will support the cause and can't wait to see you in London next year. If I don't come to India before then, then we'll meet and uh, let us know how we can help all of your various projects and your missions. I think the best way you can help us is by putting all that information in yeah, all your we'll programs. And, uh, you know, even if it's not just my program, but other programs that are uh, very watched or otherwise on your website, if yeah. you can also put in some of the information. Also, you could talk about the Dior show that I did. I think yes. we didn't have a chance to talk about that yeah. very much. Yeah. You know, because I think that Dior show, in a sense, was, uh, I should say, like a game changer. I would like to mention hmm. because it is the first time when fashion, music, and that to Indian classical music hmm. came together on one stage and live. You know, we normally on these fashion things you have, uh, you know, the models walking the ramp and the music is preset. But here it was live and uh, I did it with a Western uh, cellist where he composed the Western pieces. And yeah. I composed the Indian pieces. Right. So, uh, and then with my team on you know, flute and sarangi and tabla and keyboard and yeah. not keyboard, uh, multi percussion uh, and sitar. So, uh, it was really uh, very well appreciated. And what I really liked about it is that 15 million people have already seen that video. Wow. Uh, and that is the triumph of Indian music. And the best part is that. The tabla has been most appreciated in that. If you read the comments, you will see the tabla has been most appreciated. So it only goes to prove that if given the proper place and mm. respect, you can do anything with the tabla. Mm. Mm. But you have to have the ability to do it, you know, mm. right? You have to have that here and the ability to convey and communicate and connect with an audience. So, but the instrument should not be undervalued, is what I'm right. saying. Yes. Just yeah. because it's a so-called accompanying or a percussion instrument. Yeah, yeah, no so doubt. That's I mean, been, yeah. that's that's. I think I think the the biggest uh, lesson was that the tabla and especially Indian classical music got that set the stage. Mm, mm. And I'm really happy about that. Mm, that's that amazing. Our what culture came through so much. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to watch that. I haven't right. actually watched it and I will promote you it must. on my social channels as well. And um, you can have a look on that on my website. There's a short clip of that. OK, I'll do that. Yeah. This yeah. Show. Did you have a chance to go to my website at all? I did. Yeah, I've seen your website. Uh, of course. Yeah, right. um, I went through yeah. a lot of the okay. YouTube videos and, and did my homework. Right. Um, good, good, good. You, Great. You, Thank there are a lot of there are a lot of new things that you're doing that we've discovered today as well, which is fantastic. Next time uh, I'll have some more uh, more uh, stuff to tell you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, be well, take care. Thank you so much for being on the show, and I look forward to being in touch. And I'll WhatsApp you. I'll drop your message, and uh, we'll st we'll stay connected, uh, no doubt. Sure, absolutely. Look forward to that. Look after yourself. Thank you, Anuradha Ji. Be well. Take care. Take care. Bye. Be well. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.